So we learned in the last video how to use technology to find basic binomial probabilities. But of course, it was all completely devoid of context. So it's time to add in a little context. So we have that same student that we, we studied in the first example in this section, which they're taking a multiple choice test that has 10 questions. Each question has five choices, only one of which is correct. So the student's randomly guessing at each answer. No, just, just a reminder, we've already looked at this, but n is 10. The probability of success is 1 out of 5, because only one of the five choices is correct. Right? So we've already seen that. OK, so let's describe p of 4 in words and find its value. All right, well, words. That means using English, <laughs> right? So p of 4 means the probability the student guesses four questions correctly out of 10. Oops, I'm running out of space. Right? Out of the 10 questions that they had. All right, so that's the words. Now let's find the value. The probability of 4 is equal to, all right, so let's go to StatCrunch. All right, so stat, calculators, binomial. N is 10. We have 10 questions, but our probability of success is 1 divided by 5. And I want the probability that it equals 4. Right? That's what I'm looking for. It's the probability that 4 questions exactly correctly. So I compute, and it's 0 0.0881, right? Because that last 0 would get rounded up from this 8. So it's 0 0.0881. Done. All right, now what's the probability that x is less than 6 in words and find its values? OK, so words. What I'm doing here is checking you understand the context. So probably x less than 4 means the probability the student Um, guesses less than six questions correctly, or guesses correctly um, less than six questions. Out of ten, it's always good in binomial probabilities to kind of include the the n value, which is ten. OK, now what is this? Well, the probability that x is less than 6, it conveniently has the symbols we want. So we can use those symbols in StatCrunch. So let's go to StatCrunch. So 10 and 1 fifth are not going to change. That, that's just what this quiz is. It's 10 questions, 1 fifth. I'm going to change this symbol to a less than symbol and the number to a 6 and press Compute. And I get 0.9936. I just wrote it down. All right, now words for this one. I definitely don't make us do this many words, but of course this is for our notes, so we're trying to write down more than we actually need. <laughs> okay, so p of x greater than 2 means the probability the student guesses correctly on more than two questions. More than two questions out of 10. I should say, um, I'm getting a lot of these phrases from over here. So that's a more than symbol. Right? I can just look at it and go, oh, that's more than, right? greater than, more than. Um, the one above it was a fewer than or a less than. 
right? So having these symbols, these, these word phrases can come right out of the table. Um, the one that is a little weird is the given number because I didn't really use the word exactly. I mean, I could have. So I could have said guesses exactly four questions correctly, right? No more, no less. So guesses exactly four questions correctly. That's a little bit better way to say it anyway. All right, so now what's the value? Okay, well, probability that x greater than 2, we'll just go grab stack crunch. All right, so I'll change this symbol to a greater than symbol and a 2 and say compute, and it's 0.3222. All right, now this one's a little bit tricky just because we have to say a lot. <laughs> so, um, well, not too much. It'll be all right. So the words would be p of 3 less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 8, means the probability the student guesses between two or between three and eight questions correctly three and eight questions correctly out of ten inclusive all right what does that mean inclusive means we include three and eight right so it's it's just a word that we kind of put in to say, yep, three and eight are included in that, right? Sometimes when you say, I want to be between three and eight, people think you want four to seven, right? Because those are the numbers between three and eight. So by saying the word inclusive, it means we include three and we include eight. And you can see that we do because they have these extra little lines underneath those symbols, which means that they're included. All right, now the value is easy to find because that is what StatCrunch will do for us. It's an approximation, of course, because it'll be rounded. So we're going to switch it to a between. So you want to click on between. The one that's gray is the one that is lit up. And I want between 3, oh, that's convenient, and 8. <laughs> so I'm going to click on 8 and say Compute. And I get 0.3222. Now you might be thinking, wait a second, didn't we just have 3222? Yes, we did but for different reasons. <laughs> so let me see if I can show it. Okay, so um, what's happening is that the probability of 8, 9, and 10 are so small that they're not really affecting what's happening. So let me show you the one we just did. So I had 10, and I had 1 fifth, and I have greater than 2. So they are a tiny bit different. Look, so this one's 3, 2, 2, 2, 0, 4, 7. And this one's 3222-1968. That's because this one over here has 8, 9, and 10 included. We can't see them because they're so small they're off the screen. But technically, there's an 8, 9, and a 10 further along on that axis. And if we could just see them, we would see that they're included, but they're not included in this one on the right. That's why it's a tiny bit different. So we should make a note of that. So we could say this one was 3222200, whereas this one was 322196. I think I will show that difference. And this one was 3, oh, 0.3222047. But we're going to make a note of this, right? This is interesting stuff. There we go. So C and D are very similar. But C, this one up here, included the probability of 9 and 10 in particular. And that's as high as you can get, 10, right, because there were 10 trials. The chances the student's going to randomly guess all 10 correct, correctly, which you can imagine is a really small number. That's why it's only affecting it very, very minusculely in these 5th and 6th and 7th decimal places. That's where they're different because Letter C includes the probability of 9 and 10, but letter D does not. Fascinating, right? And the probability of 9 and 10 are very small, so it's not affecting it a lot. All right, now to pass the test, the student must score 70% or more correctly. Would it be unusual for the student to pass the test? Hmm. 
Okay, well, let's talk about passing for a second. <laughs> right? So to pass means they need 70% or higher, right, or more. Okay, so how many questions is 70%, right? So 70% um, is 0 0.70 times 10 questions, right, makes 7 questions or more, right? That's passing, right? 70% of 10 is 7. So what I really want to know, when I want to know the probability of passing, is the probability that x, the number that is correct out of 10, is greater than or equal to 7, right? Because I want 7 or more. All right, well, I can just go grab StatCrunch and tell it in either one of these. <laughs> Technically, it's a, it's a standard, not a between. So I click on standard, and then I say greater than or equal to, and then say 7, and compute and it's point zero 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 eight six, <laughs> so very, very small. So we want to answer the question, would it be unusual for the student to pass, explain? It always pays to answer the question fully. So yes, passing would be very unusual. unusual because the probability of passing I guess I'll just do capital P for probability probability of passing is far below our threshold for unusual which is 0 0.05 right 5% is unusual anything below that is unusual and this is well below that all right, I'm going to show how to do these problems with the TI-84. So if you're not using the TI-84, you can just skip ahead to the next video. All right, TI-84 folks. <laughs> so let me grab the TI-84 here. Okay, so let me clear. The first one was an equal to one. So that one's a binomes PDF. I went to the wrong place. Sorry, second distribution. Quit. Second distribution, binome PDF, which is letter A. You're going to tell it 10, you're going to tell it 1 fifth, and you are going to tell it 4. Paste. So that's that one. Uh, the second one is a less than 6, so that's second distribution, binome CDF, uh, 10, 1 fifth. And because it's a less than, you're going to do 6 take away 1, which is 5. Paste enter. So there's that one. Uh, let's see, the third one was a greater than 2. So greater than means 1 minus binome CDF 10 and 1 sixth and you're going to actually put the value 2 in. Paste. Right? And if you're wondering where are you getting all these, I'm just following this table, right? So it's a greater than, so greater than's right here, 1 minus binome CDF NP2, 2 is my value, so I just go right there, right? The first one was this one, and the second one was a less than, so that's this one, right? Um, the next one is a between one, so those are those really tough, tough ones, so, so I think I've done A, B, C, oh, nope, I didn't do the, yeah, I didn't do the 3 to 8, so that's the trickiest bit. So binome CDF, and then you put the um, 8 in, so 8, paste, but then subtract the same binome CDF, but put in 3 take away 1. 3 take away 1, enter. And there you have it. You can see that decimal place difference with those two values, which was tricky. And then the greater than or equal to, for 7, for the last bit, is 1 minus binomes CDF, 10, 1 fifth, and then you take 7, take away 1. 
it's rule number five on the sheet. And paste, and press enter. And now notice that's scientific notation. See the E negative four? That means that the decimal is four spots over to the left. So you have to be able to convert it to scientific notation. All right, so I'm going to write all those up. One minute. All right, there's A written up, B written up, and C written up. All right, and there's D and E. I wanted to make a note. So it says 8.6 E negative 4. You move that decimal one, two, three, four spots over. It becomes zero point, right? So zero point zero 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 eight six. It is the same answer. It's just that scientific notation <laughs> is a little weird. It means you have to move the decimal over. Although obviously you can see this is all a lot easier in StatCrunch than it is in a calculator.